Hey everyone, it's Bethany, and in this tutorial we are going to be making a really sweet planter. I'm really excited to make this because spring is coming up and it's getting really nice and warm outside, and it's just about time for me to wish on my lucky stars that I will keep some plants alive this year. <laughs> I did really good last summer, so I'm hoping that I just do well this summer as well. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to decorate this little planter. Isn't this sweet? I found this at Target. It was in the dollar section, but it was one of those um, trees tricky items that wasn't a dollar so I think it was either three or five dollars I can't quite remember but I know it wasn't an exact dollar um, and it's so sweet it has the little stripes on it it's a nice cream color and it comes with a nice little tray and there's a little pre-drilled hole in the bottom which my friends have told me lovingly that that is one of the good secrets to keeping a plant um, healthy and alive so if there's one thing you guys should know about me it's that I really struggle with keeping my plants alive. I just struggle so much with it. And it's not because of um, lack of good intention. I think sometimes I just don't understand watering versus overwatering versus underwatering. <laughs> so it's just one of those things I struggle so much with. So um, I am going to put a really sweet little saying on here that says, please don't die. <laughs> because I had a friend that had a little pot um, with this saying on that, and I thought that is so me. That is 100% me. So instead of trying to track it down and buying it for myself, um, I'm going to make one for myself. And so that's not an original idea, but it's definitely something that very much fits my uh, lifestyle with plants. So you guys just send me all the good vibes this year. And if you have any plants, tips or recommendations, maybe some easy, easy beginner friendly plants, then let me know because I have such a good heart that I really, really want to be able to keep some plants alive. So anyway, for this project, you're going to need a planter. You can use any kind. Um, I, of course, I'm going to be using this one that I found. Um, and then I'm going to be using some vinyl for the little um, text that we're going to be designing in Design Space. So um, when doing vinyl, I would recommend you use a permanent vinyl for this project because um, hopefully if you are um, watering your plant well, then your um, pot might be coming into contact with some water. Um, so you just wanna make sure you use a permanent vinyl because it'll just um, stand up a little bit better. Um, and then if you are doing this for an outdoor project, then a permanent vinyl will definitely be better as well. So between the water and the indoor outdoor, I would go for a permanent, but it's totally up to you. Um, I'm going to use a measuring tape to measure everything out and then I'll use a little weeding tool, scissors, and a little squeegee tool when it's time to get all the vinyl ready to go and prepped for the surface. So before we go into design space, let me go ahead and measure, I think I'll measure top to bottom. So I'm at five inches and then I don't think I want to go any more than five inches this way. So I'm thinking... I'm thinking I want to stay around, let's say, two and a half, or two and, between two and a half and three. Okay, so let's go into design space. I'm going to show you the little um, text that I'm going to create. This is not a pre-made um, image or anything, so we are going to make it all ourselves. So we'll walk you through that, and then we'll get it all cut out and put on here, and then we will be ready to be super successful with our plants, right? <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. All right, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space, and like I mentioned, we're not gonna be using a pre-made SVG or image for this um, design, so we are just simply going to use the text box. So it's this little fifth button down on the left is the text box, and I am going to, let me see, how do I want to do, I'm gonna add them in different text boxes because I'm not sure um, on line arrangement where I really want this. So I'm going to write please, and then I'm going to make this, um, I think the font is called Aftergrows. I really like this one, it's so pretty. Okay, so please, and then don't. I just loved this <laughs> planter of my friends because it's what I really do plead to my plants when I get them, or if they're showing signs of not not thriving. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it's not even like indoor versus outdoor plants. I'm just, for some reason, the struggle is so real. Okay, so for this, what I'm going to do is I'll make it a little bit bigger here so you guys can really see. If you can see here, um, the text is meant to be a connected script or cursive font, but it's not... Um, 
typed out that way. So what we need to do is we need to click on them individually and come up here to ungroup. And so right now they are, they are all um, grouped together as a word. Once you click ungroup, it's going to ungroup them to not be just a word, but to be individual letters. So now you can drag them together. And there is also another feature, um, letter spacing. You can just minimize this and drag them together if you'd like. Um, I know many of you love to do that. I um, prefer to do it this way um, just because I feel like um, I feel like I usually end up having to do it manually anyway, so I just kind of start out that way. So I'm gonna leave these unconnected and I'm going to then weld these together. Now, if you notice, the little E filled in, so I'm gonna go back and I that just means that that L in front of it kind of got too close and it's going uh, too far into the E. Um, so I just pull that out a little bit and then weld again and that has solved it. But now, let me go back. Now it kind of seems like I'm down, down a little bit too much there. So let me see if I can do that. Okay. So it's just kind of a tricky little back and forth game sometimes with design space. So now I'll go ungroup and I'm just going to do the same thing for the next two and connect those little letters. Isn't this a really pretty font? Um, this, I believe, was from Font Bundles. I believe, I believe it was, um, well, it was definitely a free download um, at the time. So if you guys like this font, then you can just go download it. Um, and I'm making this for personal use. So, oh goodness. See, it just becomes a stinker. So we just go and kind of tweak that D, pull it out a little bit and weld again. Okay. Okay, so now that I have everything arranged how I want it um, and connected, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna decide, let me decide if I wanna do it on two lines or three. I really don't like making choices, oh goodness. Okay, I think I'm gonna do three. That feels good to me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight everything and I'm gonna come up here to align and I'm gonna say center horizontally. Okay, and so that helps it center itself. So I do think that looks really good. So now when we measured, we said we didn't want it to go any bigger than three and no wider than five. So we can go ahead and make this a tad bigger. Let's see. In length, we said no longer than three. So we can go ahead and make that, let's say two and a quarter. And I'm gonna behind the scenes, I'm just gonna grab my little measuring tape and I am going to just measure out two and a quarter to see if I still really like that. And I think I do, I think that's gonna look really, really nice. I might make it two and a half, no, I'm gonna do two, no, I'm gonna do two and three quarters. Okay, and then, Let's see, at three and a half, that's gonna look really good. Okay, so never um, underestimate the power of measuring twice because you don't wanna waste your vinyl. So definitely take your time, keep measuring until you totally feel that little flutter in your heart that everything is gonna be just fine and everything uh, feels feels good. So um, go ahead and do that. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go ahead and weld all three of these lines together. If I don't and I go over here to hit make it, and we're actually not gonna use the joy today. Um, we are going to use, let me go back out. I'll just. We are gonna use, you can use the Joy though. You can use any cutting machine for this, but we are gonna use the Maker because the Maker is what's on my table right now. Um, so if I go to hit Make It, what's gonna happen is all of the pieces are going to um, be placed haphazardly on the mat and not in that nice alignment that we have arranged and um, done our aligning with. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to highlight all three pieces and see over here in our um, right hand side, they are all three different um, layers. So now what we'll do is we'll hit weld and then they go and um, become just one. So now this is all one file and it will cut just like this. So I think this is gonna be perfect. Now, once we go to make it, then it's going to um, place it on our mat just like we designed it so that we can just lay it down once. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click continue and it's gonna locate my little maker machine and then we'll just select our material. So the vinyl that I'm using is Cricut vinyl, I just checked. 
Okay, and so now I'll select my material. So I will, let's see if it's in popular. Do, 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 do. Where, maybe not. So I'll just browse my materials and I'm gonna go to vinyl. I could have typed it in, but, um, and then I'm using premium vinyl permanent. We'll just do premium vinyl and click done. I don't know if this is the same for you guys, but I feel like since the last update that I can't save my favorites or if I do go to star my favorites, um, they're not um, saving. So I don't know, let me know if you guys are having that problem too. Um, it's obviously not hard to go in and find my material, but I'm curious if it's just me or if, if everybody else's favorites are kind of getting lost in the shuffle. Um, okay, so premium vinyl, I'm gonna use default pressure and we're gonna get our mat loaded and get cutting. Okay, so I'm just gonna load my vinyl onto my mat. Just like this. Okay. And then once it's loaded on, I just like to put my full sheet on my mat. You can cut it down if you'd like as well, um, but I find it easier to save vinyl if I can just put the whole sheet on there because then I can just cut around it really nicely once the cut on the um, Cricut has been made but do it however you like. So I'm just gonna make sure that's all nice and laid down and I'm gonna open up my maker here. Pull it out a little bit. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna load it. And then once this little uh, Cricut icon starts flashing, we can click, click it and it'll get to cutting. There we go. Okay, so now while that is cutting, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my sweet little jar here or my planter and I am going to put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on it so that we can get it all clean okay so I'm just putting a little bit on my little cotton swab here and I'm just going to rub the outside I can see um with the lights that there's some smudges on it um just from handling it so this will remove any type of oils that were on the surface or any dirt or grime from sitting at the, the store. It seems like such a long time ago that I picked this up when I was just leisurely shopping um, at Target. Doesn't it seem like a long time? Do you guys feel that way as well um, when thinking about things before the stay at home orders? Um, this seems like a long time ago. Definitely something I will not take for granted again. There's so, there's so many things I feel like I won't take for granted again. It's been a very humbling experience so okay so this is gonna be all perfect now this is what um, a really good tip for just making sure your surface is all ready to go for vinyl um, it just helps the vinyl stick better um, and gives a nice um, blank canvas for the vinyl so I'm just gonna set that up this way okay and now we'll unload our mat Oh, I think the size is going to be great. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip my mat over and I'm going to peel the mat away from the vinyl. And we're done with that. And then this is the part I was telling you about with um, how I like to save vinyl. So instead of cutting a little small piece out, I just like to go ahead and trim around my design to save as much of the remaining vinyl as I can. Okay, that. Okay, so we're all set and we can save the rest of this. And then it's also kind of nice because my scrap pieces are now with my main roll. So then I'm not worried about where my scrap versus my rolls are stored, which definitely, I definitely have a scrap bin for all of those, but it's kind of nice when everything can just be placed together because it's easy to keep track of your colors that way. So, okay. So now we're just gonna get this weeded and put on our little um, planter. Okay, and I forgot that we're gonna need um, some transfer tape. So always be sure that you're utilizing the description box that's below the video because I'll make sure to put everything there. But sometimes um, I forget to put some things out on the table to introduce to you. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my weeding tool and we'll stay there. Um, we are going to weed out our negative space. So this uh, weeding process is just taking away anything that we don't want in our design. So I um, just start with the surrounding areas 
and it looks like we were able to save a lot of vinyl so that's just awesome oh let me grab my little um vinyl bin you guys helped me make this my cute little bye bye bin so this is handy for all my little scraps okay so now what I'll do is I'm going to go through each letter and I'm going to just take out all of the little middle pieces. That way our letters can really start coming to life and they'll start looking more and more like the design that we designed in Design Space. So going individually through each one. I love this font. It's so cute. So pretty. Okay, so definitely tell me what your secrets are for your plants. My husband just bought me a really pretty orchid, um, and the directions were, um, and it's already pre-potted, of course, so this it's not for this project, but um, it said in bold, do not overwater this, and it was like water every 10 days or something like that. Um, so I was really excited because I thought this is a plant I can get on board with because I can definitely remember to water every once a week or so you know or a little over a week so I'm hoping you guys pray for me for seriously so that I can keep this sweet little orchid alive but let me know your um your plants my neighborhood gave me some really great plant recommendations last year um for outdoor plants that are really beginner friendly and my porch stayed beautiful all year um, so let me know what you guys think as well. Okay, so this is all done. One little best practice thing I personally like to do is I like to take my weeding tool and just scroll over each letter just to double check that I got everything out. And since I did, we're all set. So I'll just go ahead and set this aside. And now my workspace stays clean. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little piece of this transfer tape and lay it over my vinyl okay and then I'm just gonna cut away my extra there okay okay so now what I'll do is I will just take my little scraping tool and I'm just gonna press really firmly down on my transfer tape and vinyl and this is going to help the vinyl and the transfer tape meet so we're just introducing those two friends together and it's going to help us just pull that um the job of the transfer tape is to pull up our vinyl off of the sheet that we cut it on and that is going to help us transfer it over to our flower pot so hence the um, word transfer tape. So you can always remember that's why they call it transfer tape is it's going to transfer your design. And so I like to do the back too. And now what I'll do is I will just take a corner, keeping it flipped upside down, and I will peel it at an angle, making sure to go slow so that I get all of my um, dots to my eyes. And if you ever stumble um, or have a stubborn piece, just grab your little weeding tool and just kind of help nudge and convince those little guys to come along. Looks like I got my little apostrophe and I got my dot to my eye and just help nudge along this little E and I should be done. Okay, easy peasy. Okay, so now the last thing I'm going to do that I find helpful is I'm just gonna kind of trim the sides of my transfer tape. I just think it's super helpful to have as less uh, material as you can. Um, it just helps me personally with centering, but if you don't um, struggle with centering, then you can skip this part if you, if you don't find it necessary personally for you. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my little, and I might just kind of wedge him with a couple different things here. Never be afraid to use all things. <laughs> okay, and then what I'm gonna do is because this is a curved surface, um, one thing that can be very helpful is if you take your scissors and just kind of cut little slits in your transfer tape. This is gonna help your transfer tape become flexible um, once it goes down on a curved surface. If you don't do this, then your transfer tape is gonna wanna 
take on that and maintain that, you know, square nature. Um, so if you do this, it kind of helps it bend and kind of go with the flow, honestly. That's the best way I can describe it. You're just kind of helping it go with the flow. Being careful not to cut your design. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to center this as best as I can and being careful because once you lay it down, it's gonna wanna stick, so. good to me. Now once it's down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger and just kind of rub the middle and then kind of rub towards the edge. And I'll do the same with this side. Finger first. Then I'll take my scraper tool and I'll just really go in and this part, we have this down so we can move these little guys out of the way. Um, this part is just going to also ensure that you can get all the bubbles out that tend to sometimes want to sneak under your vinyl and make it um, lumpy, I suppose is a good word. So we're just going to really get that down. Okay. Now what I'll do is, since we cut little slits in the transfer tape, it's going to want to come off in little pieces and that's totally fine. So what I'll do is I'll just keep um, peeling it away and it comes off, it'll still come off really easy and nice, but it just may come off in smaller pieces than in one a nice big piece. Oh, I love how my husband actually, just before I um, started recording, he helped me pick the vinyl color. So I'll have to tell him that I really love what he chose. I had a little bit of a darker vinyl, um, darker gray, and he, knowing, he knows that I am very, um, I have like a very pastel and very um, soft, color palette and so he chose this one and said I think that you'll like this better and he's so right he knows me so well that really paired nice how cute is that I love it it looks so cute and I love the the um the stripes or the lines on it it's so sweet oh my goodness I really like it okay so that is how easy it is again we used a permanent vinyl if you do notice any little bubbles you can take your um squeegee tool and just like that just push them right out. It's super easy. And you'll just kind of push them towards the edge of your vinyl and just they just kind of pop out. So um, that's what you'll do if you notice any of those. And um, again, we use a permanent vinyl. I, I would definitely recommend it, um, especially if you're going to be putting this outdoors, but also because, um, you know, if you accidentally dribble over the side with your water, then you don't really have to worry about your vinyl, um, you know, coming off or wanting to peel up. But um, I think this looks really sweet and I'm really excited. I, you guys ser seriously pray for me and send me all of your good planting vibes and advice because I love having fresh flowers and plants around. Um, but I just, I'm not sure. I don't even know, <laughs> but this year I, I feel, I feel a victory with plants. So I'm feeling good about it. All right, everyone. So now I have my little planter. I've got the little base for the bottom, so that's gonna look so, so sweet. Just have to decide what to put in it, um, and then we'll be all set. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, especially right now. Um, it's just so nice to hear from everybody because we're all you know, staying safe at home, so it's just nice to chit chat with y'all. So um, make sure you leave me a comment, tell me what you're crafting, um, give me your fun plant advice. Um, what else did I tell you to talk to me about? I can't remember, but anyway, just chit chat. Love to hear from you. Um, if you're not subscribed, welcome, and I would love if you would subscribe. There's a lot of fun things coming up, and and I can't wait to see what you guys think of the next craft that's coming to the channel. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.